All right, I'm back. It's been a while. I've been dealing with some personal issues and, you know, whatnot. Um, I'm going to be doing this video. I've been wanting to do this for a while because I keep seeing this thing get passed around a lot. This so-called ex-Satan, this John Ramirez guy here. Um, I'm seeing it passed around and shared a lot on Facebook and social media and stuff like that. It's just like, why? I mean... It just shows you how ignorant people are. They'll believe anything these days. Um, I'm going to show you why this guy is a still a Satanist. Okay, um, You're going to see the charismatic doctrine in this video that he that he follows. And, of course, it's being recorded by CB, you know, big problem there, the Catholic Broadcasting Network. Um, I mean, that's the, that's the truth of it. Um, they support all those... Uh, those devil uh, TV evangelists, which I don't really waste my time on too much because they, I mean, those guys are so easily to spot, easy to spot. Even the greenest of Christians can spot those guys are wolves. So I don't even waste my time with those. I waste time, I worry about things like this right here, the ones that are clever, subtle, like this right here. They sound like they're truthful, but yet there's that poison in there that gets you. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to play it. And uh, I'm gonna get to the, and I'm gonna stop it when we get to the poison part. And I, I'm gonna apologize just ha just ahead of time. Some of this stuff's very vexing, so uh, just uh, hang tight. John Ramirez grew up in the Bronx, where his relatives practiced Santa Rita. My father's side came from a family of witches and warlocks. My father was very heavy into Santa Rita, very heavy into spiritualism. John longed for a relationship with his dad. But his father was abusive. There was no love. There was no compassion. We watched him beat my mother in, in the house. He came in most of the time, uh, demanding stuff, asking for stuff. If things wasn't done a certain way, it was always put down. Hurtful words, dummy, stupid, amount to nothing, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I would just stand by the door and look and see what he was up to because I was looking to see if there was time for me. Just to have an interaction, right? We did something, my dad and I did something. But he was connected to the demons. He was connected to spiritualism. John's mother was also influenced by Santeria. At his aunt's suggestion, she took John to a tarot card reading. The lady sent the cards. I had 30 days to do a ceremony or I would be blind. So my mother... I want to make a point real quick. Um, <clears throat> there's now a Christian group that's uh, promoting tarot cards now. Just want to bring that up. I'm sure some of you have heard of it, but anyways, continue. Good mother. Didn't want nothing to happen to her son, so we did it. They blindfolded me, did a bath for me with herbs, and they started chanting and calling my main guy demons from Santeria. From that moment, John's life changed. My whole personality, everything who I stand for as a young boy, was no longer there. I felt like someone took a black blanket and just put it right over me, spiritually. I wasn't answering not only to my mom and my dad, but I was answering to the demons. John's involvement with Santeria deepened quickly. I was being taught and trained with high-ranked devil worshippers into spiritualism. I went to sinking into funerals, acting like I knew the person because I wanted to buy the soul or that person that died because I can get that soul. Okay, I want to stop him right there real quick. High-ranking devil worshippers. You know, now I'm not saying some of the stuff doesn't go on in Freemasonry, okay, but... High-ranking devil worshippers are in churches, Freemasons, running 501c3 incorporated churches. Okay, the Bible says, Second Corinthians chapter 11, that the ministers of Satan also transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness. They look like Christians. Just want to point that out. Let's continue. Put it on somebody and die the same way. When drug dealers got killed in the street, I wanted to run out and get the blood because I can use that human blood to do witchcraft. For the first time in his life, John felt powerful and respected. People knew that I was a force to be reckoned with. I liked that power. I was talked down to as a young boy. Now I had the authority and the power that I can do whatever I want. When John was 13, his father was murdered in a bar fight. John gave credit to the devil for relieving his mother's suffering. I'll be up at 5 in the morning calling out to God saying, help my mother. And no one showed up. But the devil showed up because he killed my dad. 
I didn't believe that they would say, well, no one loves you, but I love you. Your father can't provide for you, but I, I, I'm your provider. The devil said to me, uh, do, do, the, do the religion. I give you anything you want. Just ask. John says Satan became the father he never had. John was devoted to him. I light up my candles. If I didn't have money for a roof, I cut myself and use my own blood and pour it in. The whole atmosphere of the room changes. And you know there's something there. And then when it's there, you have to dress them like a family member. My father, I'm here. What would you like to speak to me about? What is it you want me to do? As time went on, John also practiced the dark arts outside his apartment. He preyed on Christians in particular. At the clubs, I would go around looking for Christians. And I knew that in the club, you was in the devil's playground. So I knew that if I can... <laughs> Christians going to nightclubs? I don't think so. <laughs> if you're still going to uh, a nightclub, you're probably not saved. Okay. You shouldn't be going to nightclubs. They're not Christians. They're false converts. Get into and you had a beer tour ready in your system. I knew all I had to do was just say, listen, I have something to tell you today. And right now you will open the door and you said, what is it you need to tell me? You gave me gateway. Eventually, John became a high priest in Palo Mayambe, a form of African spiritualism. As he became more powerful, John took warfare seriously. The devil told me that I had to go into the neighborhood in the spur round in order to weaken it in the natural. Whatever you kill in the spur round, you can kill in the natural. So I will leave my body home and I should project myself in different borough, different region, different states, different countries. And as I follow the neighborhood, I would speak curses into the neighborhood, speak things that I wanted to happen into the neighborhood. Sometimes I will go into neighborhoods and I see people in the spur in the corner praying, holding hands, heads bowed, praying up a storm. And there was no accomplishment in that neighborhood. That neighborhood was sanctified, blessed to pray. There was, you couldn't touch it. But the other neighborhoods, it was party time. Around that time, John met a girl who intrigued him. I said, well, you know, I can hang out with her. She's good looking, and she's in church. She also invited John to her parents, who talked to him about Jesus. They had the Bible out. Hey, listen, we want to talk to you about this. I'm like, oh, I can't come to your house. Your parents are crazy. I said, now at least let me digest the food, and then you can talk about this Jesus guy. And then after I leave her, I will go to worship. I will go to double church and kill animals all night long. And then I will come back and see her, but she didn't know. John found the Christians amusing and harmless. We had a different system that they had. They stuff with just kisses, hallelujah, we love you. So I kept coming to church to please her. But I wasn't going to leave people I was committed to. One Sunday morning, the pastor gave an altar call. John went forward, but wasn't prepared for what happened next. I said, well, the devil can't touch me here. I'm in front of the pastor now. I'm protected. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I got demon possessed. I got them by the door, picked them up and asked, I came for you. And all these big men came out to see, try to grab me. I was just throwing people around like right guards. And then 200 some people got up and raised up hands. Spiritual warfare for a person that would have killed them on a heartbeat. Just charismatic cuckoo bird nonsense is all it is, people. It's, I mean, it's just. Now, what he did, the strength thing, yeah. I mean, the the Bible he talks about in Mark chapter 5, I believe it is, um, about the about the demons breaking chains and fetters. You know, incredible strength. Yeah, absolutely. But what they're doing, trying to cast out devils, no. I don't think so. This stuff's not going on today. I saw the power of God in the church. One of the guys was whispering back in my ear, say, say, Jesus is Lord, say, Jesus is Lord, say it, say it. So I couldn't open my mouth. And then Jesus suddenly, I was able to say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And the devil left. John was embarrassed about the outburst, but not sure what to do next. One of the church elders approached him a few days later. He said, Jesus wants you to have this. He gave me a sweatshirt. They said, you're a warrior, Christ. 
for someone to come and say, this is a gift in Christ. She loves you. To me, that was amazing. I couldn't believe that Jesus loved me. Is that true? Does Jesus love the lost, wicked world? No. They're children of wrath. Okay. No. You need to tell them the truth. That he's, that he's a sinner and he's going to pay for his sins one day. And he's got to come to that point and realize that he, he's and that he needs to put his faith in Jesus Christ. And that's not happening here. So let's continue. But I was committed to the dark side. I was committed to the demons. I was committed to the devil. And I was between two worlds. One night, John decided to end the struggle between the two worlds the only way he knew how. I said, Lord, Jesus can't have me, the devil can't have me, the best way I have suicide. In my ignorance, in my shame, in my, in my mind that was so far gone, spiritually drained, face spiritually drained. John didn't know how to pray, but he began to talk to God. I don't know what they call you, Jesus, whatever they call you in church. I don't like you. I never liked you. I never had nothing to do with you. I want no dealings with you. I hate you. I don't want to be part of you. I, don't want to, I never want to be a Christian. I disown you. If that's going to get you away from me, I will worship the devil to the day I die. I whisper, saying, if you are bigger than the God that I serve, then you show me tonight or leave me alone. John went to sleep and dreamed he was on a subway. The train was filled with people. And the faces of the train, and we were going somewhere that I knew there was not no, good. Is going. And as the train was going faster than light, so there was a lady dressed very elegant. And she started talking to me in demonic tongues. I understood the tongue. Traitor, you're leaving us. <laughs> so I try to get into the middle of the train, in the middle of the people, so she won't reach me. Pop hit. And the doors opened. I ended up in hell. John stepped out of... Oh, he ended up in hell. Chapter and verse on that, please. Show me anybody that went to hell and came back. I mean, give me a break. Charismatic cuckoo bird nonsense, people. It's all it is. Let's continue. The subway and into the darkness. As I went to the tunnels of the hell, the heat it wasn't a heat that you feel on earth. It grips you and the fear ropes around you. There's no hope. The hope is removed. As I got to a part of the tunnel, the devil came out, bigger and more strong. I've never seen him like that. And he said to me, I've been with you since you were nine years old. I've been a father to you. I've given you everything. He said, I'm going to keep you here, because if I can keep you here, you won't wake up upstairs, which is on earth. And he said, You belong to me, and you're not going to leave. You know too many sisters about my religion. And when he went to grab me, to snuff me, this drift food, cross would appear in my hands. I can't understand how a cross would appear in my hands. I never put a cross. I put it on the devil. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, what do I even begin? Satan in hell? I don't think so. Satan's not in hell. He will not go to hell until the bottomless pit after the great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. He'll be cast in the bottomless pit, and then he'll be cast in the lake of fire after his final rebellion. Okay? T Satan's not in hell right now. Um, does Satan have power to damn you to hell and keep you there? No. Okay? That's God. God runs hell, not Satan. See? This is how you, t this is how you can spot a fake right here. A phony. A fraud. Right here. Someone lies and makes up fables. You know, what does the Bible say about that? Let's go there real quick. If my thing will let me. That's not what I wanted. Come on. All right, go down to let's go down to Timothy. Whoops, still trying to get used to this darn thing.
Preach the word. Be in, instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heat to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn onto fables. Yep, exactly what's going on right here, guys. Just fables. Nothing scriptural at all. Satan has no power over you at all. Okay. Now, he is the father of the lost world. Absolutely. But he still has a, he still has to go to God for permission for anything. So, I'm not going to play any more of it. I mean, that's pretty much it. You can see his testimony is based upon a dream. Time and time again, I, this is this is typical among the charismatics, Pentecostal charismatic movement, dreams and visions. Their testimonies are based off dreams and visions. Okay, what about what about repentance? What about repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? What about that? No, no, it's by experience. Now, you know, that's the new gospel experience. Yeah, you know, I mean. <laughs> How can people fall for this? I mean, really. I mean, if you really know your Bible, how can you fall for this? Who has ever been to hell and came back and lived to tell about it? The only account of anybody being in hell was a rich man. Was a rich man. And he couldn't get out. He wanted to send Lazarus back to tell his family about hell and to warn them. And Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Yep. We don't need experience, okay? We have the Word of God, okay? The Word of God is all you need. We have a more sure word of prophecy, the Bible says. The Word of God. The Word is exalted above His name. Yep. This is just, it's just charismatic nonsense. And you shouldn't fall for it. And it just makes me sad that some of the so-called brethren out there are, are being duped by this. I mean, it's it's quite disgusting. I mean, it really is. I mean, you shouldn't fall for this crap. It's this is this is satanic. I mean, this really is. There's no basis in scripture whatsoever. So, um, let me know how this sounds. By by the way, um, I'm using a new computer here. This is like a it's like a Android tablet slash computer type thing. It's got a keyboard and a mouse and all that stuff, and I'm pretty excited about it. It's not the it's not the newest, latest, and greatest thing, but I found it at a pawn shop, and uh, it seems to work pretty decent. Um, I also found a computer, a laptop there. Um, it seems like my videos turn out better when I do them on a tablet than I do on a, on a laptop. So um, I'll use a laptop for other things, but I um, want to try this out, see how it worked on here, and uh, let me know how it sounds. But uh, that's going to be it for now. Um, thank you for watching.